Hey, why is Jeff Bezos making a 10,000 year clock? I want to know why. Okay, so this is a website that Bezos himself, you can see at the bottom here, signed by Jeff Bezos. He's building a 10,000 year clock in a very remote mountain range here in West Texas. So it looks like this. It's got some nice pictures. Building it seems quite difficult, bringing up the equipment here, making a cave, right? And then also the clock itself. This is pretty impressive, honestly. Look at this thing. So it has anniversary chambers for 1, 10, 100, and 1,000, and 10,000 year anniversaries. And they're not going to build the animations for these years, right? But they will leave it to future generations. And they will allow, you know, there's things for future builders to correct the clock triggering events. Now, why in the world is Bezos doing this? Like, you think that he would probably have his iPhone at this point, and he's fine with, with this. So I want to go and talk a little bit of a lesson about long-term thinking here. So most SaaS founders that we work with, most companies uh, that we've worked with across e-com, SaaS, etc., all of our clients, most of them, and the vast majority, tend to think in terms of short time period paradigms, right? So one month in advance sometimes feels like a long time. Two, you know, a quarter, doing a quarterly meeting, planning for what's happening next quarter or next six months or a year, often this is the extent of it, right? So for most companies, this is this is really where they're locked in at this point, right? So I'm just going to draw this arrow and show you all, you know, this is this is sort of average. Sometime in here, this is like the limit, I would say, for, for a lot of, of companies. So I'll just write most companies, right? So this is because there's a lot of uncertainty. You don't know really how much further, how much longer your company is going to survive, if it's going to survive, etc. So what we want to do, though, is think about the smoke some some of the most successful people leave clues and one of the clues that's that bezos is leaving here is he is not thinking in this paradigm of one year and you can hear in this re most recent podcast he's actually breaking it down in terms of in terms of generations right so this is generational thinking and this is very different right if you think in terms of generations like what is what is thinking in terms of generations right so you know, the next generation, I'm not quite sure, maybe 30 years, is that roughly a generation? So that would be one, right? And then we do that again, and then one more generation here, I kind of have a strange scale, but next generation would only be 32, maybe like here, right? And then, so assuming we're doing another 30 years, so it's like 80, so like 120, something like this, a little shorter. And then 150, then we get to here, right? And then we can push this back a little bit. Nice. Okay. So now we've got our generational thinking, and then you know another another couple here, just generally, right? So boom. Probably fit fit two generations inside of this, and uh, we'll call it good, right? So thinking about in terms of generations, this is. Then we get we get a little crazy here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is think about six generations down down the the pipeline. That's that's gonna get that's a little nuts, right? So this is what I learned from a lot of these really big entrepreneurs is most of the billionaires aren't thinking about what's going to happen at the end of the year, right? Most luxury companies, you know, I was looking at what was going on inside of Hermes, you know, and they're luxury this luxury brand now they don't think about the end of the year they barely check their yearly review they 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 abhor doing quarterly meetings they don't even like to look at the numbers right they're thinking we're okay to grow at a you know five to ten percent rate every couple of years you know because they they know that they can sustain this for a very long period of time and that compounds right so what is what is ten percent every every couple of years over a hundred years. That's, that's insane. That type of growth is ridiculous, right? And this is when you get back to a lot of these adages about, oh, you know, if you save your money as as a as like a 10 year old and you save one dollar or a thousand dollars, you'll be a millionaire by, I don't know, when you're 40, 50 or something. 
right? So that's where you keep hearing this stuff, but most people don't do it. Like, I don't know, I personally don't know anyone that's actually done that, right? So maybe you have, I don't know, but at least I haven't. So in this case, I wanna look at what, let's go backwards now, right? What do, what are some of the biggest companies doing over this time period that have survived? Because the other thing we can say for sure is a company that has had a long-term perspective has survived the test of time, right? And we're not even in human history, we're pretty rel we're relatively short in terms of this time time period, right? If you think about some of the biggest companies now, Apple, et cetera, they're not that old at all, right? But let's look at long-term established companies here. We've got IBM, Ford Motor Company, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, General Electric, Nestle, HSBC, Bayer, Siemens, JP Morgan Chase, right? JP Morgan Chase, I believe, goes back to the 1700s at some point. And it's interesting because what what are these types of businesses, right? We have like banking, banking, we have like electricity, uh, GE, you know, products. We've got cars, technology, much a bit shorter, right? That would make sense. Food and beverage, food and beverage. And then I believe, I'm not sure the history of Siemens and Bayer, but I know now they're still in a lot of technology um, development, things like that, as well as uh, pharmaceuticals, et cetera, right? So it's interesting that these these are the one, these are a bunch of the top ones that existed, sort of the highlights. You know, we can also look at insurance companies that have been around for hundreds of years because, you know, what is an insurance company, right? It's literally, they're selling mathematical models, right? That's how they make money. They determine risks and bets, and if their bets and uh, projections are good enough, then they'll be able to stick around and stand the test of time. So what do I want you to do and why am I gonna go back to this answer? Of, well, what the heck, Bezos, why are you making a 10,000 year clock? Well, it's because there's an effort for him to think, to tell people in our generation to think and make longer term bets, to think in terms of lifetimes, not what's happening next month, next week, uh, your friend's birthday party in, in a month from now, right? Like we wanna have a bigger impact think further for our entire generation. And this is something me, it, I, I'm having trouble doing as well. Uh, I'm also not that not that experienced, not that wise, but I do also see the value in thinking long-term because when I've worked with companies, personally in my team, right? When we grow companies, it's infinitely harder to compete with every single business that is going after a goal in a month or in three months or next year. It's so much harder to do that, right? But if you allow time to compound and to continue to do something for a long time, just as I have started to do with this company as well, right? And all of the material that I'm creating, I'm not looking at playing the short-term game, right? We're all thinking about how do we, in my company, we think about what is it going to be in five or 10 years from now? What is the market going to look like then? What can we do to set ourselves up for you know, a win in, in five or 10 years, not just this month, right? We wanna plant the seeds now and harvest later, right? Where most companies are focused on hunting now and eating their eating their prey as soon as they kill it. So this is more of a gathering mindset, more of a hunter gatherer, like we're more on the gathering side rather than the hunter. And that's something that I want you to take away with is, of course, you have to put food on the table. Of course, you have to eat now, but start planting seeds because that is what is going to last you a lifetime and multiple generations to come, right? So if you want to learn more about this and how we actually implement this on a step-by-step -step basis and more in-depth, right, this might seem a little bit uh, a little bit vague right now, go ahead and check out the two and a half hour, 500K per month SaaS scaling framework that we put together. There is a 100 page Google doc where I've outlined everything here that I've learned in the last couple of years of scaling multiple SaaS companies past seven figures and how we've been able to also build multiple companies like that, right? So if that's something you're interested in, check that out below. I think the link should still be working. Uh, it's going to be there for a limited time. All right, thank you so much. And if you enjoyed, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.